Before the break, we asked you a sample question from a standardized test of U.S. history for eighth graders. What were European explorers such as Henry Hudson looking for when they sailed the coast and rivers of North America in the 1600s? The answer is A, a water trade route to Asia. America's eighth graders struggled with that question and many others in last year's National Assessment of U.S. History and Civics. CBS News' Michael George explains why the latest nation's report card is particularly concerning to educators. The latest report card shows kids' history scores are now historically low. The nation's middle schoolers are struggling to explain major themes and events in the country's past and lack a basic understanding of the way government works. Eighth grade scores in history and civics dropped to the lowest level since the 1990s when the Department of Education started the assessments. It sounds dramatic to say that our democracy is at stake, but I think that's not so far from the truth. That's because history is about more than memorizing battles or presidents. If our students don't understand the decisions that were made by other humans in the past, how can they possibly understand the world that they live in now? According to the nation's report card, just 13% of eighth graders scored at or above proficient in history, 22% in civics. I think they're avoiding some of the history that they don't want to teach. The drop in history scores continues an alarming nationwide trend. Every single state has also seen a decline in math or reading scores since the start of the pandemic. Education experts blame the decline on remote pandemic learning and a lack of support for teachers. There is a fundamental distrust of teachers. They are professionals and, and we need to trust them. With nearly a third of students unable to describe the structure or function of government, educators say this is a wake up call to the nation. Michael George, CBS News, New York. For more on this, I'm joined by Martin West. He's an academic dean and Henry Lee Shattuck professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Martin is also a member of the National Assessment Governing Board, which oversees the nation's report card on U.S. history and civics. Martin, what do you make of these numbers and also the numbers that have been going down in uh, math and reading? Well, we know that Part of what's going on here is simply the effects of the pandemic and the destruction that it wrought on our nation's schools for a period of time. In the case of history, though, I think it's important to note that history scores began falling in 2014. They fell by a similar amount between 2014 and 2018 as they did over the past four years. And so I think we need to take a hard look at whether subjects like history and civics are being pushed aside in American schools and whether teachers have the preparation, the materials, and the time that they need to address those subjects effectively. So Martin, I wanna ask you two questions about how to fix this. The first is for that generation that you've already described is already behind. Um, is it too late or can anything be done about that generation that on history and civics has missed it? It's not too late, but it is urgent. So the eighth graders who took this exam in the spring of 2022 are now freshmen in high school. They have three more years in high school and about that same amount of time before they become voters. And I think it is urgent that high schools provide high quality course options for those students that give them the opportunity to learn what they have not picked up along the way. What about now for the generations to come. In other words, if this line has been going in the wrong direction, what can be done for those to come? Yeah, I think that's exactly the right question. I think we need to think about the urgent problem right now for older students. Longer term, we need to be thinking about how history and civics are covered throughout elementary and middle school competition. And I think the key idea there is to help educators understand that content in history and civics is not in tension with, not in competition with, efforts to promote students' reading skills, but rather it's exactly what they need to become strong readers. Being a strong reader requires that you have a solid understanding of background knowledge in the areas you're reading about, and that's exactly what we need to help students do. So quickly, as you're teaching education, the idea is that you read better when you're actively engaged with the ideas for the purposes of learning a larger thing, not just reading for the sake of reading. 
That's exactly right. We know that reading requires solid uh, fundamentals in phonics and decoding of words, but it also requires students to have strong reserves of background knowledge that they can draw on to uh, extend their knowledge and learn new material. And Martin, then finally, how is it, how hard is it now to teach history and civics in this highly politicized environment where everything seems to be up for grabs for certain politicians in terms of history and civics? Yeah, I think the um, debates that you're talking about that have been particularly salient recently, I think they're too recent to uh, have much to do with these results. I think what's important now is that we not let debates over how to teach history get in the way of actually doing it. There's a broad consensus among American uh, parents uh, that we should teach history uh, well and teach it warts and all. And that's what I think we need to help educators do. Martin West, thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure.